Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another installment in the iWish series. A series in which I investigate rather dubious tech products sold on various sites around the web just to see if they're any good. Most of the time they're not, but I like to buy this stuff so you don't have to. But once again, this product was funded by you folks on a live stream that I did a month ago or so. So a massive thank you to these folks displayed on screen for donating during that live stream to see this product. I really do appreciate it. And I'll say your names at the end of the video as well. There's not too many names here, so I don't mind naming you all. And there's familiar names on here anyway, so I always do appreciate the folks that come back wanting to see more garbage from AliExpress. And yeah, of course, what I'm looking at is another cheap iPhone from AliExpress. There is a weird name attached to it, but it's also a phone that's ripping off a phone from a company called Techno, which I have heard of the brand Techno before, but I haven't taken a look at any of their phones. And it's just weird to see that a cheaper brand is being knocked off. Unlike Samsung's and iPhones and all that sort of stuff, now they're knocking off more lesser known brands because Techno is quite popular in India. And as you'll see in the listing for this, the item looks almost exactly like the real deal. So folks, buckle up for this one because we're going to be taking a really deep dive into this unknown phone that's on AliExpress. But I will remind everyone now that there's timestamps in the description as well as the pin comment so you can skip along to wherever you'd like to be. I'm going to be having a look at the listing and doing an unboxing, testing it, rambling, all that sort of stuff. And people can usually tell by the run time of the video that there's a whole lot of things we need to cover on the phone that is called the Pover 5 Pro smartphone Android 6.53 inch 64 gig ROM 4 gig RAM 5000 milliamp hour on the go mobile mobile phones 5 plus 16 megapixel octa core google play new cell phones and currently this is only $105 Australian from AliExpress with free shipping as well. So I'll display a rough currency conversion chart of how much this would cost in certain parts of the world. Um, I should also include an Indian currency conversion chart because I know Techno is popular in India. So um, I'll add that there too. But yeah, for a hundred bucks, you get this cheap iPhone. There's the brand name. Fuffy. Do I need to remind you all of the weird names we've had on this channel? I don't think I need to. But Fuffy, as far as I know, or Foofy, they have a lot of cheap smartphones on AliExpress. So if you go onto AliExpress now and have a look at cheap smartphones, you'll most likely come across this Fuffy brand. But yeah, it's the Pover 5 Pro right there. Global firmware, 4 gig and 64 gig. However, the first telltale sign that this is not the real Techno phone is there's no Techno branding, but the real deal has 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Also multiple LED lights on the back and is running a MediaTek Dimensity 6080 in it. But with this video, hopefully people that do come across this realize that it's not the real deal and can swiftly pass on this one. Because for $100, I'm not expecting too much with this, but we won't know until we start looking at this thing. And speaking of the specifications of the real deal, here's a specification of the fake one. This is the supposed specs at the moment. We've got the MT6753 eight core processor, 6.53 inch HD display, 720 by 1600. We've got 2G, 3G and 4G bands listed. So it'd be interesting to see if it actually does work on 4G or not. The MediaTek that's in this does support it, but I'll try it out once I start testing. Colors, black and sliver. I did ask on the live stream what color we should go for and everyone in the live chat said silver. So we went sliver. 4 gig RAM, 64 gigs of storage. Multifunction, full HD screen, face recognition, dual SIM, on the go, Wi-Fi, GPS, FM, radio, Bluetooth, 4.0, gravity sensor alarm, and it just keeps going. It's running Android 8.1, a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. The real deal has 5,000 milliamp hours in it too. This also has an ultra uni body and uses type C USB. The phone itself looks really exciting. And I did kind of have some high hopes for this, but I looked at the reviews on AliExpress and we've got this review that says camera quality low, look like a microwave AI. I mean, that's one way to say that the pictures are bad on the phone. For $100 Australian, I don't think I'll get four gigs of RAM or even 64 gigs of storage. If I do, I'll be very surprised. We have the listing that I will go through, but I'll only show the more important parts of the listing. So let's start it off with configure the list. And as you can see in the top left corner, chat GPT. This is the first phone that I've come across that's likely a welcome device that has AI built into it. Well, actually more just the chat GPT application just thrown on there. We'll ask it some questions and see what I can do. We've got the specs just listed there, which I've already been through, but there's one that sticks out like a sore thumb. Well, it's not actually sore, but you know what I mean. The dynamic island. Yes, this claims to have a dynamic island. We'll definitely see how it's implemented in this review. We've got the slim and stylish design. Our phone is not only slim and stylish, but also features an AG glass back cover that adds an extra touch of elegance. The frosted finish creates a unique texture that feels great in your hand and looks stunning from every angle. With its combination of fashion and function, our phone is the perfect accessory for any occasion. Not gonna lie, the phone looks pretty cool. 
as you all know, it's ripping off the real techno phone, which has the lights on the back. I don't think this has got any lights, nor do I think it's glass on the back either. For all you folks as a throwback, 16 million HD rear camera. Our phone features a powerful dual core sensor and advanced AI technology in its rear cameras, including a stunning 16 megapixel resolution with quick double shot capabilities, image Rubik's Cube technology, an AI scene camera, backlight photo, and portrait composition. Your phone becomes your own professional imaging team. <sighs> Okay, we're all on the same page. That's the return of the Rubik's Cube technology, which first appeared on the channel in 2019, I believe. And that's still going, and we still don't know what it means. I just want to quickly point out this picture, the face recognition unlock. The guy looks like Rick Astley, kind of, and he's kind of staring at the phone like, it's sus, and also it's poorly photoshopped, but just agree with it. 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Roy battery? I think I've made that joke before. With its massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery, our phone is built to last all day and more. Whether you're streaming your favorite shows, playing games, or just browsing the web, you can be sure that you won't run out of juice anytime soon. And when it's time to recharge, our phone supports fast charging technology, so you can get back to using your device in no time. 66 watt max fast charging. Anyone want to guess that's probably just 5 volt 2 amps? That's another thing I'll have to test out. And we've got the 4G bands global version unlocked. And now, a lot of the welcome phones that I've had a look at on the channel all claim that they have 5G, but this just claims that it has 4G, which is kind of a good thing. Even though we'd all like to see 5G on a really cheap phone like this, it's not going to happen for quite a long time. So just a little interesting thing I'd point out. Now talking about the AI, Android 8.1 AI powered, Android 8.1 leverages the power of AI to give you more out of the phone. This edition includes the best of Android, featuring new and redesigned apps, providing a smarter, more efficient and convenient U experience. Oh, a convenient U experience. I got you now. What are we up to? Almost Android 15, and this is running Android 8.1. Not exactly the latest and up to date, but it will be be fine for this? Probably not. Here is the dynamic island. Meet the new face of Povo 5 Pro. Isn't it Pova? Didn't it say Pova? It said Pova, did it not? Well, for the sake of it, maybe we should just call it a Povo so it's distinguishing away from the real deal. But the dynamic island is a magical new way, toying, to act. It blends fun and function like never before, consolidating your notifications into one interact place to seamlessly service what you need right when you need it all without taking you away from what you're doing. Did that make any sense whatsoever? I reckon it'll be so poorly implemented. Can't wait to test that out. Hi-Fi makes music change your heart. The revolutionary face detection helps you quick access your personal phone without any other move. Quite convenient for busy time or tight moment. I think they're confusing it with face unlocking, but sure thing. Support for AI GPT 4.5, which supposedly doesn't exist, as I was told. Povo 5 Pro can chat with you about various topics, write intelligently, draw pictures with AI, write programs programs provide you with a lot of useful information and suggestions. It's like a smart friend making your work and life more powerful. We will definitely see about that. That's all of the listing. I have breezed over most of the pictures because I didn't want to spend too much time looking at the listing. I just want to go straight into looking at this phone and unboxing it all and taking a look at this thing. So here we go. Taking almost three weeks from China to Australia, we have the parcel. Will this $100 phone be a decent performer or pure garbage? Let's find out. Well, it's an orange box, and there it is. Wow, it's just a photo of the phone and that's it. No branding, no nothing. All looking very plain in this instance. Absolutely nothing around the box except for Povo 5 Pro. That's definitely looking like a welcome sticker right there, but they've put four plus 64 over the other spec listings there. Interesting. On the back we get, oh, shiny HD screen super AMOLED. Sure thing. High digital camera. What's he been smoking? Face recognition. HD voice will only be available, all that sort of stuff. Does this have VOLTE? I wonder. Inside the box? We have the phone that's heavy. It's got to be a weight to it. And then we have a slightly higher quality charger, five volt at two amps. It's slightly higher quality because the plastic's more thicker on this. Should we try and open it? All right. Wow, okay. Um, it's... 3% better than the other ones I've had a look at on the channel before. But uh, feel free in the comments if you're an electrical person to tell me if that's safe or not. I'm not plugging it in, I'll just throw it out with yeah, Type-C USB. On the go adapter. It's a cheap one, but hey, it's something. Type-C earphones, just the generic ones with the super clicky button. Yep, Sim eject tool, a free case. It's a pretty big phone for what it is. And we get a screen protector and the usual instructions that's on a tiny bit of paper that says, hey, open your phone, record the moment, appreciate the colorful pictures, enjoy the wonderful music, I will. In the process of cell phone, use have problems, want to get more user guide? Please visit the Android's official website. Indeed I will, indeed I will. Well, we're not gonna put the screen protector on, but we'll keep the case out. We'll have to try on the go support too, to see if that works. 
Oh, oh, I didn't pick silver. No, I picked silver. Oh, I didn't get silver or sliver. Oh, that's a big camera bump. That's huge. Uh, there's the IMI information too, by the way, if you want to have a look and see what this corresponds with. But that should be on the box, but they never put it on there. But yeah, we've got back camera there. The 16 megapixel camera. Will you be 16 megapixels? I wonder. And then you've got the AI super camera with just a picture next to it and the LED flash. And then our second rear camera there, that's just a fake one just for decoration, but that's just a massive camera bump right there, like compared to an S23 Ultra, you know what I mean? It's it's, uh, it's a bit ridiculous. That is probably the nicest back of a cheapo phone I have seen in a while. That looks amazing. Slight problem, the back is made of plastic and so is the frame. How much does it weigh? Curious. 188 grams this weighs. So yeah, it does have a bit of heft to it. What I will say is that it feels good for $100. I just love that design there. It just looks really cool. But no lights, no wireless charging, nothing like that. Just pure decoration. Some more protective film over it. Did you just see that? Well, I see what I'm working with. So I'll just pretend I didn't see that. I lifted up the film and the back just pops up. We'll put that back on like this. We didn't see anything. We didn't see anything, right? Nah. At the top, we've got absolutely nothing. At the side, we have a reset switch and the volume buttons. At the bottom, we have speaker grill, Type-C and hole for a microphone. On the other side, we have a, I thought that was a fingerprint sensor there. No, it's just a power button and the SIM tray there as well. But the front of the phone looks a little something like this. Looks fairly average. I'll take the film off. And at the top, we can see the speaker grill for the earpiece just in there. Doesn't look like there's any sensors at the top as far as I can tell, but that right in there is our five megapixel front camera. And we do have some bezels going on, but you'll be able to see that better once I power it on. Uh, taking the SIM tray out, Got it. We have support for micro SD and two SIM cards. May as well try dual SIM cards. Why not? Before we power it on, let's put it in the case and see how thick it is now. It's not the thinnest smartphone ever with the case on. It only adds a little bit more to it, but it's reasonable. On we go. Fulfy Pover 5 Pro. That's a mouthful and a half. Okay, well, we know what we're dealing with then. Hello, welcome phone. Good to see you. Will this be the first welcome phone with four gigs of RAM? Probably not, but do you make a sound? Old sound, new animation, birds screaming outside, all looking good so far. Oh, yep, the minions. This device doesn't support this SD card. Also, the minions' butts are there. That could get me demonetized. That's bad. Oh, that's that's fine. That's good now. See, ah. The minion at the top there with his little eye being the camera. That was sort of similar to the Ucatel I looked at. That's strange with the SD card. I'll have to take it out and put it back in and see if that fixes it. But if I unlock it, there it is there. Let's go up for a close-up of the display. For a $100 phone, that's a big display. And the colors actually don't seem too bad on it. Yes, you do get a bit of a chin and the bezels are a bit thick. It's probably one of the better looking welcome phones I've ever had a look at. At the top we have 4G, but the second one is not working, so it's likely 4G and 2G for dual SIM capabilities. It says my SD card's corrupted. It has TikTok installed. Ah, oh, fuck a doodle do. No, my micro SD card's fine. Nothing wrong with it. So maybe this doesn't like micro SD cards? Perhaps. We won't worry about the micro SD card then. So that's one thing that's wrong with this so far, is it doesn't like my micro SD card. But that's fine. I'll just use internal storage. That's all good. Contacts, clock, music, face unlock, sound recorder, calendar, Gmail, Go edition. Not a good sign. YouTube, Zalo, which I've forgotten what Zalo is. FM radio, SIM toolkit, Torch, Maps Go, Google Go. Definitely not feeling good about the four gigs now. File manager, weather, calculator, Facebook, Bing. Twitter, Viber, WhatsApp, TikTok, and Line. But where's ChatGPT? Unless they use Copilot with Bing or something. I don't know. Swiping down from the top, we have a very cool looking layout sort of thing. Uh, let's see how bright the LED is. Well, that's pretty useless. It will do. It's fine. Bluetooth, not so battery saver, airplane mode, super shot. Super shot. Oh, it's just a screenshot. Okay. Auto rotate, record screen, location, hotspot, sound, and eye care. Eye care? 
Oh yeah, yep, yeah, okay, cool. Doesn't feel like one gig. And look at the settings as well. My phone, Povo 5 Pro, based on Android 8.1. MT6753, 5 megapixel, 16 megapixel, 4 gig, 64 gig, high OS version. Build number says welcome. It is definitely a welcome. But can I tell anything through the build number though? Um, nothing that is sticking out to me there. This is looking very Oppo-like, but it could be the same on a Techno phone, but I'm not too sure. Updater, well, not connected to Wi-Fi. So we'll have to come back to this. Status, we have the usual serial number of 01234567899ABCDF. Model is the Povo 5 Pro. RAM is four gig with 3.62 gig free. Press X to download on that one. Android 8.1, which is definitely Oreo. Oh, buddy. Oh, hello. Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, oh, oh. yeah he's, uh, he's, he's a little laggy. Ouch, ouch, okay. Security patch level is 2022. Baseband version, kernel version, build number, and that's about it. I'll enable developer options, why not? And network and internet, Wi-Fi, five gigahertz, not bad. Standard G board. The vibration motor in this is also fairly weak. It's probably just a little tiny coin style one. Mobile networks, enhanced 4G LTE mode, preferred network type. Well, of course, it's a welcome. Of course, it's gonna have 5G there. So what, I can get 5G now? 5G, magic. Uh, but if I go preferred networks, it just says Telstra 2G, 4G, and 3G. It's not looking too promising at the moment with searching for networks, so I might just try on-the-go support and see if this works. So far, on-the-go doesn't work either. Could be this dongle, though. Before I even continue on, the phone is heating up right there. It's just radiating heat <laughs> straight there. Not as hot as the V phone was getting, but it's getting up there. Let me give this a call then and see if Telstra works with it. What's well, the default ringtone? Probably flutey phone. Yeah, it's usual. Okay, the dynamic island has popped up. Hello, oh yeah, okay, yep, that works. I'll splice in the call quality test for the Povo 5 Pro and you can all hear how it sounds. Testing the earpiece quality of the Povo 5 Pro or is it the Povo 5 Pro? No, the Povo 5 Pro is the real deal. The Povo 5 Pro is the fake one that I'm looking at right now. And this is what the call quality sounds like. Well, this is the earpiece anyways. And it's, it's, it's fine, honestly, it's fine. It's nothing too amazing, but it's definitely using 4G. It definitely does have VOLTE, so that's a bonus for this thing. The microphone quality sounds a little something like this. And to be fairly honest, it's more than enough. It's reasonable. It's not total garbage. It's not absolutely fantastic. It's just fine. So with that, let's move on and continue looking at this thing. So watch at the top of the display. It's kind of a dynamic island. It just pops down, doesn't. Yeah, cool quality on this quite average, nothing too spectacular, so let's move on. Uh, we definitely know there's no NFC in this because I've already pulled the back off, so we'll just ignore that, but apps and notifications, we'll see all apps, go to system and quickly scroll through this. Android Easter egg, auto generated, auto dialer, Bing. Yeah, we'll have to open that up and see what we can do with that. Chrome, all this stuff here, config display. That'll be fun to test in Quick Shortcut Maker. Factory test, factory mode. Gboard, Google Go, that's not good. Home screen tips, launcher three, maps go. Also, um, people tell me about YouTube Go shutting down. I had no idea that YouTube Go is dead. Sure enough, it is. Um, also, sales tracker service there too. Okay, sim recovery test tool, switch boot animation. Yes, that's something we want to test. TikTok, can we just, can we just, yeah. All right, that was easy. Uh, Viber, WhatsApp, Zello, and a Chinese application there that we need to test later on. Battery says four hours and five minutes left. Let's see if it's got fast charging then. So using my Shargeek Storm, let's just see what it comes up as. Wait, uh-oh, the Type-C port doesn't work on it. Uh-oh, Never mind. it works. It's one of these weird ones where you can't use a Type-C to Type-C cable. That doesn't work with it. You've got to use Type-C to Type-A. Watch the dynamic island. Hey, and we're getting five volt at two amps. Close to two amps, we're getting nothing close to what it claimed in the description, but just weird that Type-C to Type-C. 
doesn't work. Must be a really old Type-C standard then. In display, brightness level is at 98%, which I can definitely say that the display is not that bright at all. It looks decent for the most part, but as for the brightness on it, this is as bright as this screen gets. Wallpaper, wallpapers. So we've got the minions. We've got geometric, more geometric. These look pretty good, actually. You have to let me know where these are from. Oh, hello, minion. You've got to use the hole punch. <laughs> For the minions that looks pretty cool and then the minions showing their butts so let me stick with i don't know that looks pretty cool not gonna lie we'll do that one swipe left and right the sidebar oh so there is not on the right though but on the left yeah so that's pretty cool that that comes up you got little shortcuts there and then you can add whatever you want very samsung edge panel looking there in sounds the phone ringtone was cygnus i'll try and dump all the system files from this and put them in the description below i should be able to get most of the stuff off here like applications wallpapers all that sort of stuff yeah feel free to comb through that and see if you find anything fun and sound enhancement which means we've got mediatek best loudness right there storage says 64 gigs right there with 12.74 gig used could it be 64 gigs of storage in this? Just using this in settings, it's actually fairly snappy. So I'm really not sure of the specs. I wanna keep that as a bit of a mystery. Screen lock, we can do face unlock. That's okay. Take your time. I got all day. There you go. Face captured, cool. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. No worries. Just ignore that. Just ignore it. Users and accounts, I'm going to have to put my Gmail onto this, so I'll go ahead and do that now. I'm now signed into my Gmail on this, so I can access the Play Store and everything. Accessibility, got not a whole lot in there, to be fairly honest. Google service and preferences, don't need to go into. System, though. Gestures is not navigation. It's just jump to camera. Developer options, I'll leave it, actually. But I will put USB debugging on, because I'll need that for dumping these system files. So if I go back to the updater, the current version is the latest not found the new version. That's all of settings. And at the moment, we know that it's only 4G. We know that we have a very primitive form of a dynamic island in this. And the performance is reasonable. So we might have something decent in this. But once again, it's just, it's just getting hot. It's just... Here we go. Let's start testing the applications then. I'll just test them in alphabetical order as I usually do. But let me open up with Google Assistant actually to see if it's Google Assistant Go or if it's just the standard one. All right, that's okay. We'll just move on. Bing. I can't believe I'm opening up Bing. Do you do anything? Maybe it's doing something. Oh, hello. Ah, there it is. Now it's time for AI. Shake your device to send feedback? Okay. We have some slight issues with Bing. It probably needs to be updated, that's why. But if I press the Bing button, it does that. I've just quickly played around with it and I can't seem to do too much else apart from actually going to the web with this and that's it. A calculator and calendar we don't need to open, but camera we will. Alrighty. It's got autofocus. Good job. It's looking as bare bones as we'd see on other welcome devices. We've got standard mode, face beauty mode, panorama, and an exposure setting. No, that's not an exposure setting. That's a bokeh mode. All right, we've got fake bokeh. I'll test that out later on then. Going to the settings, 16 megapixels for the rear camera and EIS. We'll put on video quality is 1080p or CIF if you want. And the front camera looks a little something like that. Oh, that's okay. Just agree with it, five megapixels, EIS. Oh boy, 480p on the front camera. Ouch, okay. What's the zoom like on this as well, by the way? Oh yeah, okay. But let me go ahead and take some photos and videos with the Foofy, Foofy, Povo 5 Pro, what a name. Let me also try and update some things as well. And at this point, I may as well install some of my applications as well. We'll come back, keep testing this thing out and see what else this can do, which it's looking like a whole lot of nothing, but we'll be back soon.
testing the rear camera quality of the Pogo 5 Pro. How does video look with EIS on? It's working. EIS is working. How good is it though? I mean, it looks really sharp at the moment, but I think it's a little bit too sharp. Can't tell you what the photos look like as of yet, but they're looking reasonable. We have autofocus, which is good. I don't think this is going to be anything special. I tried face beauty on these folks here, but uh, it didn't work. And it's quite windy outside too, so I thought let's test the microphones as well and see if they do once I play these back. Come on, autofocus. No? Manual focus? There you go. Uh, that, that's, that's me in the afternoon sun. No, I'm not the brick wall. I'm, yeah, there I am. Can you see the bolts even? Uh, there's these fellas there, looking good. And straight to lemon, nice close. And then up to those lemons there. Lemons, 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 lemons everywhere, and nobody even touches them. I just touch them then. Uh, Zenny, just down there. What about some detail? Kind of? No, not really. What about the sky? Look at that. Ooh, far away aircon. What do you look like? An aircon, of course. It looks pixelated. It looks really, really, really pixelated, actually. So far, camera is very meh. But I'll try it at night time with the LED flash and see how bright it is. And then I'll show you the front camera, which is also very uh. There. I'm outside with the Povo 5 Pro, and um, it was very ghosty. The LED actually isn't too bad now, but is the camera working though? Yes it is. The shots didn't look too bad, but there's a blue tint just at the top, just there, if you can see it. I'm doing this segment after I film the entire video, so I may have damaged the camera, possibly at this point in time. This is just demonstration anyways, just to give you an idea of what the quality of the camera's like at night time. And it's... it's... it's fine it'll do and the led i thought at first wasn't that good but it's actually fairly reasonable and there's any looking rusted and horrible there you go that's what nighttime looks like with this weird iphone let's move on boy it sure is windy out here today <laughs> um the the front camera quality of the what's it called again the povo 5 pro yeah that's the one uh, looks a little something like <laughs> this. Uh, zoom. Yes, very. Um, yeah, some jelly movement going on. Beauty mode. Didn't that look good? Didn't that look great? I mean, I just looked pretty cool. Detailed, perhaps? Does it look good? It doesn't look good, does it? Okay. You've just seen all the photos and videos that I took with this thing. Before we talk about that, why is this here? What is this? And why is it say can That was called mp4.mp4. Wherever that's from, feel free to let me know, but I didn't do it. Free video with a welcome phone, yay. Also, if you can hear a cricket, I'm sorry, there's a cricket outside chirping its head off. I can't negotiate with crickets, sorry. But looking back over the shots, some of them turned out okay, and some of them turned out pretty meh. Sort of just going for a zoom up of Stuart and Mick here. You do get some quality, but it's it's hard to say if it's actually 16 megapixels or not. Any tiny movement results in the photos just becoming instantly blurred, so there's no stabilization whatsoever, but I tried my absolute hardest with most of the photos to keep it as stable as possible. But like, look at the three Muppets here, for example. Like, it's fairly reasonable for what it is. There was no HDR on the rear camera, but the fake bokeh effect worked, uh, as you can see. It worked, it just creates the circle and that's how that works. The front camera, on the other hand, it's okay. It is pretty grainy in some areas, and the beauty mode was just absolutely um, horrific. Where's that one that I took where it warped my eyes? Allow me to stare into your soul. Video-wise, on both the front and back camera, the front camera is definitely what we're used to, the whole jelly movement and stuff. The rear camera with videos, it's okay. It'll do. It's nothing too spectacular. It's just one of those cameras that it's just... It's acceptable, it'll do, let's move on sort of thing. Because I now have to give you a whole bunch of updates about this device. Where do we start? Did you all notice on the lock screen that the day in the date is Wedner's day? No idea why it's like that. Maybe because it wants to have the first part of the day pronounced or something. I, I don't know. It's just there. I have tried multiple things to see if I can get that dynamic island to do any more than just a tiny little window popping up and it doesn't do anything else. When I go into Quick Shortcut Maker, hopefully there might be an application in there to do something, but there's no settings for it. Nothing. I tried on the go support with several different adapters 
and that does not work whatsoever. The on-the-go adapter that was included in the box does work, but it doesn't work with this phone. Micro SD card slot still doesn't work. I put another one in to see if it'll come up with the formatting. I restarted the phone a couple of times, nothing. When I logged into Gmail, this also popped up. And signing into this thing actually shows that it's a Mito A67. I'm gonna Google this and see if I can find out anything about the Mito A67. Add that to the list of brands that I've never heard of before, but now I do know of. A Mito A67, which appears to be a very low-end phone running Android 6. So likely that's what the IMEIs correspond to. I went into the Play Store to update all the applications on this. I searched for Arc, Survival Evolved. That didn't come up. Genshin didn't come up. That's given me an idea that the specs in this are probably going to be pretty low. I also updated Bing. While it works, the AI functionality just does this. You press it and that just says apologies, but the page you're trying to access can't be found. Tried it several times and no idea. I never use this application, so I'm not too sure what's going on with that one. Otherwise, the performance is still holding up for the most part. Like when I was installing applications, doing the camera tests and all that, it was still fairly reasonable for what it was. Also, the battery has been holding up. Judging by the size of it when I did kind of take it apart earlier, it could be 3000 milliamp hours. If you happen to have this for your daily driver, it probably wouldn't last a day given the possible specs and stuff, but for just the brief testing I've done, it's fine. So with all those updates out of the way, let's continue on with testing this thing because I am really curious to check the specs out. I haven't opened up any of the applications as of yet. I want to leave it a complete mystery. I'll open up Chrome and we'll see if this can be used for web browsing. It probably can be, but we'll just give it a quick go. And also, yes, I know Povo or Povo is slang in some countries. I didn't realize this when I was filming yesterday. I was only told late last night and I can't get it out of my head. I'm still going to call this the Povo, but the real deal is the Pova, which I know I've confused several times in this video already. Pova and Povo and all that sort of stuff. But anyways, let's go Google. There it is there. Pova 5 Pro, which this is what it looks like. Why did I open up eBay? I thought I went to GSM Arena, but okay. There it is there. That loaded fairly fast. That's definitely the techno version. The techno version, basically between the real deal and this is the back looks the same and that's probably about it. So far web browsing, honestly, it's doable. It can be done. If we were to try social media, it may struggle, but just for quick browsing on Chrome, it's perfectly fine. See, look, Amazon India, but that was fast too. Unlike the, was it the V phone where it was just chugging along? Honestly, pretty happy with the browser performance. Moving on, clock contacts, don't need to go into, device info hardware, we'll come back to, Facebook I don't need to open up, face unlock I'll go back into. Oh, it's just a shortcut to go into face unlock in settings. It's not an actual application. FM radio, we'll need the uh, earphones. Let's get the crappy earphones. Here we go. I have plenty of these laying around. What do I do with them? They just sit around and do nothing. Hey, FM radio. What's on Australian radio on Wednesday night at 9.18 p.m.? Metallic noises. I picked up more than just metallic noises. I picked up an actual song. Ah, see, holding the button actually opens up Assistant. Uh, yeah, FM radio is no good on this. Could be just these crappy earphones though, most likely. We'll get a better idea of the speaker when we get to the speaker test. Gallery, Geekbench, we'll come back to. Gmail and Google, we don't need to go into. San Andreas, we'll come back to. I forgot what line is. Isn't it some sort of social uh, thing? No, it's a free messaging, voice and video calls and more. Um, I've never used that before. Maps is there. I haven't tested GPS though, but I assume it'd be all good. Messaging, uh, YouTube music. We can do the speaker test now. Um, I don't have my, what? Colby Calais. Oh, she made that song. No, hang on. Oh, what's that song that she made like in 2009? It starts in my toes, makes me crinkle my nose. Wherever it goes, I always know. Yeah, 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 that's the one. But that's not the song that's on here. It's a Gypsy Heart Side A. Wait, this is just music? I thought it was YouTube music. BFG Division is on here. Let's test the speaker out. From the notifications, it's a fairly loud speaker, but we'll see how it's like with BFG Division. With best loudness on too. Sounding good so far.
I'll give it a pass. It's loud, a bit lacking while at the highest volume. That's probably because of best loudness as well. If the top earpiece worked as a secondary speaker, I would have had a lot more to talk about, but otherwise it's just a run of the mill average welcome speaker that I've probably seen on 20 other devices before. So let's keep quickly moving on so I can start checking the specs because I really want to see the specs of this thing. The only things that are left is just the YouTube test and Zello. I'll open up Zello first because I don't know what this is. What is this? Ah, it's Vietnamese. No, it's not. It's now English. It's a video calling thing. Okay, well now I know what Zello is. Well, let's do the YouTube test. Let's bump the video quality up to 1080p 60fps. Put that away. And let's see how we go. I don't think it's kicked in yet. Oh, there it is. Ouch. Ouch. That's 1080p. Uh, I will say the display looks good. Wait, it's fine. Is this one of those cases where it goes laggy smooth, laggy smooth? That's fine. What? Wait, hang on. Hold up. It's laggy and original, but, but, but okay, I'm confused. Well, no, it's it's fine. Ah, uh, he's laggy, but if I zoom in, he no longer laggy. Oh my god, look at that. Look how good that looks. Wow. For a cheap display, that's pretty good. YouTube's working at 1080p 60fps at some points, which is very strange. Let's open up Geekbench and see what it says. Well, it's a Povo 5 Pro, Povo 5 Pro. Android 8.1 just says MT6753, which all seems normal at this point in time. I'll run the benchmark though, and we'll see how long this takes. It's 9.30, might take half an hour, might take 10 minutes. Off you go, buddy. Speedy. Oh boy, it's done. That took almost 20 minutes, 92 and 313. To put it as a bit of a comparison, the single core score is close to a MediaTek MT6739 that was featured in the Sugar A100, and the multi-core score is exactly the same as the MediaTek MT6739 that was in the Sugar A100. So that gives me a good idea that the processor that it actually says, the MT6753, would be about correct in this. The phone is, whew, it's, it's a bit toasty at the back, just just a little bit, and we only dropped, what, 6% battery life? It still says 4 gigs of RAM in here, though. Considering it almost took 20 minutes to do that test is kind of telling me something. Okay, well, we get a good idea of performance then. Let me do a quick gaming test with GTA San Andreas and put everything up to maximum, see how it runs. I think it will run reasonable. Also, just another tidbit as well. The display isn't 6.5 inches or whatever it said in the listing. It's more like 6.45 inches. Size matters. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's... laggy. It looks nice though. If I put the settings down ever so slightly, probably be completely smooth, but seeing the lag on this, yeah. I'll never make that jump doing that little twist there. It is playable if there's nothing on screen. Uh, whoops. Spec time. What's in this thing? Supposedly 720 by 1600. MT6753, four gigs of LPDDR3. <sighs> I don't believe it. System on chip, MTK6753, eight core processor. The GPU is 720 by 1600. Yes. It's a Mali something. I don't remember the GPU in it. 1600 by 720. I wouldn't put it past it being a 720p display on this. It's probably also 5 point multi-touch. Yeah, 5 point. Memory says 4 gig and 64 gig. Camera, 16 megapixels, 5 megapixels. Battery, they've got just 5,000 there. So they have stuffed around with this. They've done something. Also in sensors, accelerometer, light and proximity. Okay, let me open up the other one, which usually tells me the true specifications. Still got Povo 5 Pro everywhere there. Definitely on Android 8.1.0, according to the API level there as well. System on chip, MT6735. Total internal memory, 32 gigabytes used minus 32 gigabytes. Interesting. Total RAM says four gigabytes. Nah, I don't believe it. Nah. 4.8 inches for the display, that's incorrect. 720p though, it seems to be 720p. Battery, <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely the capacity of this. 5 million milliamp hours, yes indeed. Thermal says 25 degrees, but it's still quite warm though. Sensors, the accelerometer is real, but the light and proximity are just generic things. Cameras, 13 megapixels for the back and five megapixels for the front. Didn't it say 13 megapixels? 
I don't remember what it said. I did say in the camera test that it is 16 megapixels. The shots do line up with 13 megapixels. That was my bad there. I'll put a note back when I'm looking over the camera quality, but yeah, 13 megapixels, which maybe? So at this point, we potentially could have a welcome phone with four gigs of RAM in it. Time to open up Quick Shortcut Maker and see what we can do, because I just, I have a hard time believing that. This has actually got me really intrigued now. I'm very curious. I reckon I'm gonna have to pull the shielding off, but config display is TYD, what do you do? So we've got the LCD listed there, which has the MediaTek model in it for some reason, but okay. The cameras are listed there as well. And the modem, but that's not what we want to check. Can we open up some sort of dynamic island thing? The face unlock is just the generic Android one. Factory test is MediaTek factory, nope, okay. Uh, MediaTek factory test is MediaTek factory test. I've said that too much. Also, it's a TYD. So you're a TYD phone. Set fake data. Ah, well, hello. How, how are you? Okay. Let me come back to this factory mode thing. Let me just see if there's anything else in here first. Before I go ahead and play around with that, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here with sales tracker service. Oh my god! Holy crap! Um, wait, that's not my Telstra sim. I'll blur the number out here just in case. That's not my number displayed on screen, but it's possibly sending data to that number? Is that what that means? Um, well, it's no longer getting data, so meh. That's very interesting. Switch boot animation. Holy shit. I could put 22 gigs of RAM in this. I could put two terabytes if I wanted to. I could make the front camera 108 megapixels. I could also make the back camera 108 megapixels and the Android version to 14. The battery, 5,000 milliamp hours. Screen size, I can make it bigger. Screen density, 720 by 1600, eight core and all the Povo models there. So three gigs of RAM we may have in this then, but not four gigabytes though. How odd. Okay. Oh. I didn't mean for that to happen. The animation's cool though. If someone doesn't properly check, you're gonna believe that this does have four gigs of RAM. It's fooled me up until this point that it does have four gigs. It's not seeming like it though. They're actually trying to hide it. So coming back into Quick Shortcut Maker, that dodgy Chinese app is just a testing app. There's nothing else. So switch boot animation, switch logo. I can only just do welcome. All right, so if I was to go back to the switch boot animation, for the absolute fun of it, let's just change everything to the absolute maximum. Put an eight gen two in it, 10 core. This can now also be the, the hot 30. Can I, can I do an emoji for the device name or will I brick this thing? I better not. There you go, it's a welcome thing now. Let's see the changes I've done to this. Just like that, I've upgraded my phone to a powerhouse. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, look, see? My phone, welcome thing. Yep, there it is. Perfect. That's, that's, uh, that's legit. 23 gigabytes, free 16 gigabytes. Yeah, it makes sense. Seems legit. Android 14. It's just a JPEG. Now, what does Device Info Hardware say about it? Well, everything that I've changed it to. So now jumping back to Quick Shortcut Maker and going to that MediaTek one, set fake data. 2 gig and 3 gig. Well, it's either one of them. I don't know what that says there. Does that mean true? It says actual value there. Not allowed to do this operation. Free me fake ROM. Uh, uh, all right. Mm -hmm. If I go back to the switch boot animation and I go off all the lowest values and say that it's 3 plus 32, the front camera being 2 megapixels and 13 megapixels, possibly. 4G, 8.1, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, uh, 6.528 inches. As I said, 6.45. Definitely the 6753 that's in here, eight core, and it's the Povo 5 Pro. So I'm gonna put everything down to the lowest. So I can change it to a Povo 5 Pro or a Povo 5 Pro or a Povo 5 Pro Plus. Genuinely, this welcome phone has got me. Usually it's very easy to tell, but at this point in time, I am not sure what exactly is inside of this RAM and storage wise. It could be three and 32 gig, which means that this possibly is the highest spec welcome device that I'm holding in my hands right now. It took five years for them to actually reach the <laughs> three gig and 32 gigs of storage. Wow. This goes to show how terrible my memory is. The S23 Ultra, 
that I had a look at had three gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. That would have been the highest spec welcome phone that I've had a look at. This is probably second in running. Apart from the obvious confusion about what's inside of this thing, for $100, it's okay. I wouldn't recommend to purchase this though, but if you happen to purchase it, it would be fine for most basic needs and most basic tasks. With the issues that I'm having with like the micro SD on the go not working and just a couple of other things, it's definitely an interesting welcome device. That's for sure. Is it anything too special? Not really. Is it confusing though? Yes, it is. Thus, I wanna just jump straight into a teardown and pull this thing apart. I'll go back into specifications once I tear this thing apart and see what it says. Oh, we can pop the back off. Nice and easy. Not gonna lie, I'm actually kind of excited at this point in time because I'm just interested to see what the hell's going on with this. Here's our uh, machined piece of aluminium with the decorative camera just hanging there. Just chilling. I'll put that there. What does it say here? Three plus 32. There it is right there. It's three gig RAM and 32 gigs of storage in this. I don't really need to take the shielding off, but I probably will just in case. Three gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. Welcome devices are getting slightly better. We actually do have 4G on this, which is good. And VOLT also appeared to work as well. I can see a metal frame in there and the vibration motor's at the top as well. Okay, with the 37 screws removed, I can now pop the frame off. Get an idea of what's inside of this thing. Oh, the buttons just flew out. Okay, I'll just put that over there. Okay, I'm trying to find out the capacity of the battery and I can't quite tell as of yet what that could be. That speaker is actually kind of beefy in this. That's probably one of the biggest speakers I've seen from a welcome device. Not bad. Lifting the battery up, it was just held in place with three pieces of double-sided tape. Definitely have a metal frame in there. And the display has a code on it just there, which says it's HD+. So I'd say that resolution that was reported is correct. Wait a second, do we actually have sensors on here? Wait, what the hell? The flex cable has a flex cable on a flex cable. <laughs> do you see that? Haven't seen that one before. With everything sort of dangling off the motherboard, I think I should be able to just lift it out. There we go. Alrighty. Well, they've put graphite tape in there for cooling. Didn't help much, but it, it's something. Let's investigate this motherboard then. Can we please have a look at the weird camera? What have they done to my boy? Get this. It's a camera that's on a flex cable that connects to a flex cable. Why didn't... Oh, because it's upside down. That's why. Uh, well, it's... Got no movement to it. It does say N1609 on there though. Could it be 16 megapixels? Maybe say 13 megapixels for this one. On the opposite side, there's the shielding that we're gonna need to take off just there. The SIM area looks really funky. Doesn't look too happy in there. So that's probably why the micro SD card just doesn't work. The front camera is just this little tiny guy there. There's nothing too spectacular. Yeah, it doesn't say too much on the code. So I can't really go off anything there. I guess we're ripping the shielding off them. And this is for science. Here we go. Hopefully I got that off in one piece. Well, that is definitely the MediaTek MT6753V in there. So that's confirmed. But we have a module just here. I'm gonna have to Google this. I've looked up the codes and nothing's coming up for it. If you would like to look up the codes for this, feel free. I'll go with what the sticker said, three and 32 gig. And that would be three gigs of LPDDR3 and EMMC as well. It's definitely now one of the more interesting welcome phones that we've come across. It's something different, that's for certain. I mean, I could pull the shielding off here as well, but I don't want to risk it. And we also have an unused connector just there as well. But that is what is going on with this thing. Also found a bit of white paper. Don't know where that came from. Oh, that's some double-sided tape. Okay, that's a bonus. I'll, I'll put it back together. Hopefully this still lives on because I haven't done the camera test at night, nor have I recorded the call quality off this thing. So I'm really hoping that this still works. It should, I didn't do too much to it, did I? Okay, it's half back together. Let me just see if it still works. Please still work. Oh, okay. Whew, I can breathe now. All right, I'll display all the specs to the side. Feel free to pause the video if you need to, to take all of that in. Where's the sound? Did I break the sound? Uh-oh. What have I done? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Now it should work. 
There we go. I fixed it. It's all good. I need to give this welcome phone credit because it threw me off throughout this review. I had my doubts because of the performance of it, but now finally knowing the true specs of it, they did their best. Honestly, they did their best. It's time to put this thing back together then and call this a video, I think, because wow, holy moly, this has been going on for a long time. All the screws are back in, so I'll put the large camera bump, the unnecessarily large camera bump, back on there. Put the little thingo on the LED flash. I'll just take the rest of the tape off. Put the back cover back on. Put the SIM tray back in there. Yeah, the SIM tray just feels really rough, so it could have been faulty from the start. It's back together. I based all of these specifications that I just listed before from this. We could debate about the 13 megapixel rear camera, but I think it's probably a really cheap 13 megapixel camera, but we definitely have three gig of RAM, 32 gigs of storage and 8.1 on this. Welcome phones are getting slightly better. The price is good, but there's just a couple of things that make this not really recommended to go with. But with that, I think that's everything that I need to talk about on the Povo 5 Pro, which is a knockoff of the Techno Povo 5 Pro um, that's available for a certain amount of money. I hope you've all thoroughly enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed making this one and I'm glad that I got to take a look at this. But in saying that welcome devices are getting better, I have this one that I have to test next. That's for another day though, but I can definitely say that this beats that. I think I've covered everything that I needed to in this really long rambly video about a cheapo phone. Thank you all so much for watching this one. I really, really do appreciate it. The fact that you've made it to the end, if you're hearing this, once again, I really appreciate you being here. If you've had to use the timestamps, that's not a problem. That's why I include them so you can skip along and not be in anticipation of when's he gonna reveal the specs or when's he gonna power the phone on? You can just jump straight to it. Honestly, I just appreciate you all for, for watching these videos. It really does mean a lot to me. And I hope I've given you some good entertainment for today. But this review was made possible with donations by these kind folks displayed on screen. Most of these folks are usual donors of the channel, such as Ruffle Daniel, Helmy87, Everyday Blind, or King Cobra, Brian Martins, Cutie Clism, Makoto Itchy Nose, hope I said that correct, Skylar D, Dingo Vlog, Ryuji CM, Beats Popo, Cheese the Sylveon, Beto Aviation, Diego Martins, and HVN. Thank you all so much for donating on that live stream towards seeing this device. I hope I've given you all a very thorough review of a cheapo device. You'll have to let me know how I did in this one and what your thoughts about this device were. If you think it was a worthy device or if you thought it was just another welcome device that may have had some slightly better specs than the last one, nothing different. Let's move on to the next one. I'd like to hear your opinions down in the comments below. All right, everyone, not too much left in this video. Thank you all once again for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll be working on that other welcome device soon. So stay tuned for that one. And and I've also got a phone from a manufacturer that I have to review soon. And I also want to film some of the phone tour as well, because I now have this little Samsung added to my collection. I already had one, but this has a cracked LCD and I have to remove it. It's fine. Don't worry. As always, take care. Stay safe. Be good people. I'll see you all next time for another stupidly long, rambly look at a cheapo smartphone that no one's ever going to buy. Actually, people are buying this phone. I will say still don't buy it. But if you're interested in a cheapo phone for a hundred bucks to play around with, go for it. All right, everyone, keep being awesome, and I'll see you all soon. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.